We were in the final year of production on Toy Story. And all of the big toy companies passed on making toys for Toy Story. Disney Consumer Products went to this small toy company called Thinkway Toys. And the toy maker's name is Albert Chan. And so they offered him Toy Story. And he said, yes, absolutely. We had to design a complete line of toys, make the molds, manufacture, and ship to retailers in just a few short months. And he was talking, describing to me the toys that he is going to make. At that time, the action figure aisle, they only sold action figures that were about six inches high. But I kept saying, the kids are gonna look up on the screen and they're gonna want what Andy's playing with. They're gonna want the real toy. He said to me, Albert, just trust me. So I gave him my trust and make the 12 inch Buzz and 16 inch Woody. These are the toys from Toy Story, Woody and Buzz. What's really cool about them is that they actually took our computer data and milled um, the, the molds for them. So, I mean, this is taking being on model to new uh, heights. So this is exactly what's in the movie. It's pretty cool. So after he was finished, the orders that he had was only 60,000 Buzz Lightyear's in all of North America and 45,000 Woody's. So he invested his own money and he made another 250,000 of Buzz Lightyear and of Woody the Cowboy. And he had those in a warehouse for reorders. The toys sold out prior to the movie opening. And this is the Buzz Lightyear aisle. Back in 1995, short-sighted retailers did not order enough dolls to meet demand. The reorders the week after the movie opened was 1.6 million Buzz Lightyears. And Albert has never stopped making Buzz Lightyear. For most companies, it was risky business. For me, it was an investment that paid off and changed my life. To this day, he has made over 35 million Buzz Lightyear dolls. This has been fun on Toy Story 3 because uh, this is the first time that I have been a part of creating characters who are becoming toys now. Part of our design process on Lotso was to actually create a real plush version of him because we knew that in the final film we wanted Lotso to be believably a plush figure. You know, we didn't want him to feel like a human in a costume. And those early plush prototypes helped inform the further design of him, figuring out his proportions and you know, size of his facial features. But it was also great for the animators to have something physical that they could hold and, and look and see how a plush arm bent or uh, for the technical directors who had the daunting task of making his fur look real. It's better for everyone. At the time that we got those prototypes, it was very exciting because it was kind of that feeling of holding something that we were in the middle of creating. We don't take it for granted, even though it's been 15 years and we're used to these toys being made, there's still something very special and exciting about getting to see them for the first time. See, they're buddies, but then they can also... <laughs> well, are you... My name's Lotso Hugging Bear, and what I need is your love and care. <laughs>